Hello everyone. Welcome to this video. I'm Takeshi Hasegawa speaking on behalf of this laboratory in Kyoto University, Japan, to introduce our cutting-edge analytical tool, MERS. MERS is specially designed for analysis of molecular orientation in thin film deposited on a solid substrate. Material properties of a thin film cannot be determined by the primary chemical structure of a single molecule alone, but also by the molecular aggregation structure, which is a, key, a critical key to design the properties and functions of the thin film indeed. The aggregation structure is often analyzed by the X-ray diffraction technique, which powerfully reveals polymorph and their orientations, but it misses amorphous parts. Even a spectroscopic technique is employed, unsatisfactory results are obtained for a thin film having an uneven surface. This limits the analysis of practically important films represented by the spin-coated films. Reaction analysis in thin film is another big matter because the peak intensity depends on both quantity of chemical species and the molecular orientations. In this manner, analysis of a thin film has long been a very difficult matter. MERS opens a way to access all these unexplored fields, which can easily be equipped on FDIR. Now, the missing gear has been found, and they cooperatively work on analysis of thin films, which provides us with a very rich chemical information for the film at hand. Before talking about MERS, the fundamental concept of molecular orientation analysis using FTIR is mentioned first. We have two important measurement schemes for thin films deposited on a solid substrate. One of them is the transmission spectrometry, and the other is reflection absorption one. In the transmission spectrometry, IR light is irradiated perpendicularly to the film, and the transmitted light is collected by the spectrometer. In this case, the electric field is parallel to the surface, and this is why only surface parallel or in-plane component of molecular vibrations is selectively observed. In the case of RA technique, the film must be deposited on metallic surface, and the P-polarized P-polarized IR light is irradiated at a grazing angle to generate the surface normal electric field oscillation at the metallic surface. As a result, in this case, only the surface perpendicular component of molecular vibrations is selectively observed. In this manner, the two spectra obtained by the two techniques are complementary with each other, which are necessary to discuss the orientation angle of the molecular vibrations. Here, we encounter a big problem that the sensitivities of the two methods are largely different from each other. In other words, the ordinate scale is different, which makes the quantitative analysis difficult. This matter is overcome by using MERS. To make the ordinate scales of the IP and OP spectra common, both spectra are measured by the same optical configurations and no metallic surface is needed even for the OP measurement. This schematic cannot directly be carried out, but it can be involved in a regression equation if the measurement is imagined to be possible. The actual measurements are performed on FDIR, and the light intensity is measured at different angles of incidence that are specifically determined a priori depending on the substrate of the sample. The collected spectra are decomposed to have the IP and OP spectra as the least squared solution of the regression equation. The collection of spectra at a specific angles are performed automatically, and this calculation is also automatically performed. Therefore, you can use MERS as a black box. I'm showing you a mere spectrum of a pentacene film on silicon. Pentacene is a stiff molecule, and the short, long axis and the plane normal directions are named x, y, and z, respectively, 
which are mutually orthogonal. Fortunately, vibrational modes along the three directions appear at different positions very apparently, and the orientation angles can be revealed by each intensity ratio because of the common ordinate scale of the IP and OP spectra. When the analytical results are put in the direction cosine equation, we have the summation of 1.00 as theoretically expected, which means that the analytical accuracy attains three significant figures. This is the typical benefit of using MERS for the thin film analysis. Now uh, let us take a look at the actual me MERS measurements performed on Nicole IS-50 by Thermo Fisher Scientific. This is the MERS equipment set in the sample room of FTIR. The sample rotator is inside, which is fully processed by dry air through this pipe. The sample used today is an evaporated thin film of D-NAFTO-TNO-TEOFANES, DMTT, deposited on silicon substrate. The substrate is a double-sided polished one, because MERS takes a transmission optical geometry. As you find, the thin film is deposited on one side of the substrate. The IR light is passing through the sample from the back side, because the thin film sometimes scatters the light unexpectedly. The sample is put on this sample holder perpendicularly. Then, the holder is got back in this sample box, and the air purge cover is put on the top. On this computer screen, the substrate tab of silicon is selected, and then the optimal angles of incidence for silicon are automatically set. After spending some time for the air purge, the sample measurements are started by pressing this button. The collection of single beam spectra at the optimal angles is performed automatically, and the spectra necessary are also saved automatically. Then, the same process is repeated for the background measurements. After that, what we have to do is simply pressing this MERS analysis button. The MERS IP and OP spectra soon appear on the screen. These are spectra before the baseline correction, but you find an apparent difference between the IP and OP spectra, indicating a significant molecular orientation in the film. I'm showing you application studies using MERS. Pentacin is a famous compound as an organic semiconductor, but it is not dissolved in organic solvent, which is not good for wet process. Therefore, this precursor compound, SAP, SAP, was developed, which is easily dissolved in a solvent. Once the SAP film on silicon is prepared by the spin coating technique, then the film is converted by heating to have a pentacin film. The conversion mechanism in this film is investigated by using MERS. These are IR MERS spectra as a function of the thermal treatment temperature. The carbonyl group is available only in SAP, and therefore this band is a good marker of SAP. In a similar manner, this band is a good marker of pentacin. When we look over the spectra, the sub band disappears at about 135 degrees, and at the same time, the pentacin band appears, which means the thermal conversion occurs at this temperature. Of interest is that at this early stage, the generated pentacin has a random orientation because the IP and OP spectra are the same as each other for both shape and intensity. At a higher temperature, after finishing the conversion, an apparent difference is found between the IP and OP spectra, indicating a molecular orientation of pentacin in the film. 
Molecular orientation analysis on mere spectra is an easy task, and the analytical results are summarized over here. At an early stage, all the angles are near the magic angle, which implies that the molecules have a random orientation. When the substrate temperature is increased, the molecules have a highly oriented structure, and 180 degrees is good enough for obtaining the oriented structure. Next, a totally different use of mares is introduced. The thermal reaction is pursued by using chemometrics on the spectra. Quantity analysis on chemometrics is mostly done for a solution sample. This is because the molecules are randomly oriented and the band intensity is simply proportional to the molecular quantity in the solution sample. In the case of thin film analysis, however, molecular orientation also influences the band intensity as well as the molecular quantity via the surface section rules. In other words, we cannot have the information of the molecular quantity solely. But fortunately, MEARS works powerfully to remove the orientation effect. Because the MEARS IP and OP spectra have a common absorbance scale, the isotropic spectrum that corresponds to a randomly oriented sample can easily be calculated by averaging calculation. In fact, the calculated spectrum is very similar to the reference orientation-free spectrum. Now, we are ready for the reaction pursue using the isotropic spectra, A-iso. The number of constituents involved in this film is analyzed by principal component analysis, PCA, on the isotropic spectra. An ideally beautiful eigenvalue plot is obtained by using the A-iso spectra, which is a great benefit of using MERS. The eigenvalue plot apparently implies that three components go to the basis factors. We know that the two components of SAP and pentacene are involved in the system. Then, why three? The reason is that the pentacene film has two different phases of the bulk and thin film phases, which can be discriminated by both X-ray diffraction and infrared spectroscopy. As a result, we have three constituents in the system as revealed by the PCA analysis using the A isospectra. Now, the reaction analysis is performed by using the CLS regression analysis. CLS works powerfully if the exact number of the constituents in the system is available, which determines the matrix size. To operate the CLS analysis, the A isospectra are stored in the matrix A, and three pure constitu constituent spectra are put in the matrix K, and then the con concentration matrix C is readily calculated. The calculated results are shown here. The thermal conversion begins at about 120 degrees, and at an early stage, both bulk and thin film phases are simultaneously generated. But at about 140 degrees, the thin film phases begins to be converted to the bulk phase, and finally, most of the film is occupied by the bulk phase. In this manner, I have shown that MERS has major two roles. Uh, one of them is for molecular orientation analysis with a MERS specific character that both IP and OP spectra obtained with a common ordinate scale. The other one is the quantity analysis using the A isospectra. In this case, the orientation information is annihilated, and instead, the orientation-free spectrum is generated, which is quite useful for the highly quantitative study. As a result, very details happen in the film are revealed in terms of both orientation and quantity, and a schematic picture is easily obtained. As a matter of fact, MERS works with XRD cooperatively well. If you can use both MERS and XRD, you would deeply recognize that they complementary work together to reveal the molecular aggregation structure in the film at hand. 
In this talk, I have skipped details, but MERS has two different representative measurement techniques of PMERS and MERS2. Both techniques provide intrinsically the same results on the identical sample, but some differences are summarized here. PMERS employs the p-polarization only, which makes FTIR free from the matter of polarization dependencies. In fact, a very accurate analysis is possible using this technique. In addition, if we want to analyze a biaxial sample, PMERS is recommended. MERS2 is a very robust technique, which is impervious to optical fringes and water vapor noise. For details, you are invited to read this review paper on MERS, which can be downloaded free of charge. Thank you very much for watching this video. It's your turn to measure your thin film samples to solve your problems in your laboratory.